There's nothing wrong to put our needs before Jesus because he says, cast all your cares on me. Didn't he say that? Cast all your cares on me. Do we pray to solve our problems? Do we have a laundry list? You know, I can remember this laundry list. I had a, it was a boo, it was, man, it was long and I kept up with it. I stopped doing that. It, it just, it just, it was a pain to keep up with. So I just stopped. This is not having a relationship with God, but is that all your prayer is? If, that, if that's all your prayer is, just, I, you know, it's like the, the girl. She, she just give up because that's all she wanted. All she gave him was the laundry list. It is like you, if your child comes to you and, and asks you for money and, uh, and they tell you that, you know, if you don't give me any money, I'm just not going to talk to you. I mean, it, it, is that, would, would you enjoy that type of relationship with your child? Uh, that's what we do to God. We, we say, oh, he's not a God. He you know, answer me. Um, do we come to church out of duty or do we want to have a relationship with our God? Ask yourself that question. Her friend told her that she was going in the wrong direction and that she was not an Adventist. But she's in that Adventist church. She said, oh, yes, I, she said, I was baptized a long time ago. I know everything about the Sabbath and the state of the dead and the spirit of prophecy. Can you tell me how much we love Jesus by how much time we spend with him? Her friend said, don't tell me what you know, but who you know. She said, I know God. <laughs> and the friend said, no, you don't. If you knew God, you wouldn't say that he doesn't answer your prayers. Because, because he says, because my God cares. You don't know God. Basically, you have, a, you have nothing to do with God. You are a stranger to him. Think about... The ten virgins. These ten virgins in Matthew chapter 25 starts at verse 1. These ten virgins are all members of a church. And they all believe that they're going to, to be with Jesus one day. But when the knock is at the door, five get up and they have oil for their lamps and the other five get up they don't have oil. And the oil is the Holy Spirit, of course. Uh, the, the, the study's a lot deeper than that. I'm just kind of skimming over it. But the, the five that have their oil said, said you, you better go to the store real quick and come back. And then you'll have oil, you know, buy some oil. We can't share our, our oil. How can you share your, your Holy Spirit, the part of the Holy Spirit that's in you? You can't, you can't share that. So these five go off to the to the oil store, oil store, <laughs> if you get oil, <laughs> back in Jesus' day. And uh, they come back and they knock on the door and they can't get in. Put yourself in that place. Which five do you want to be in? I mean, it, it, just think about when you've been left out of things in, in this life. I mean, being left out of that is like, you know, that's forever. But we've been left out of things in this life that hurts. She says everybody struggles. Her friend says, no, everybody doesn't struggle. Says we all have challenges. Yes, but not everybody struggles. When you have God, you know that He's in control. If you don't know, then you don't have God. If you don't know that God is in control, you don't have God. Her friend said, come to church. You come to church because you have to do your duty. You live, your, your, your life is salvation by works. And she had plenty of works. I mean, I, I told you, I gave you the list of the things she was doing. Anyway, now, it's, it's kind of interesting. 
a Hindu guy knocks on her door. A Hindu knocks on her door. And he says, I found Jesus. And he was so excited. He says, he says I'm knocking on everybody's door. He says, because I, I want to give Bible studies about Jesus. And he, I mean, this guy's ecstatic. He has Jesus. He says, she says, I know all about Jesus. And he goes, really? Well, tell me what you know about Jesus. She says, well, I go to church. I keep the Sabbath. And she got, you know, that whole list of things that Adventists do. She gives him the list. And he says, the Hindu, then the Hindu guy says, that's not Jesus. <laughs> the Jesus I found is not like that. The Jesus I found, you have to spend time with him. You got to love him. She says, how can I spend time with God? Can you see God? And he goes, yes. She said, you're nuts. That's why she called him. He was nuts. Was he nuts? I don't think so. He said, you are not a Christian. And that's what her friend had been telling her. You're not a Christian. She said, oh, yes, I am. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. He said, I don't care what church you belong to. You are not a Christian. I mean, this guy's a brand new Christian. He, he's, got, he's, he's got the love of Jesus in his heart, and he can't see the love of Jesus in hers. He said, come and study with me. And she, she, she consented to study with him. She said, she said, what are you going to teach me? And he said, about Jesus. I'm going to teach you about Jesus. And several weeks went by, and this lady had brought several people to the Bible. So this is a true story. The, this lady had brought several people. I think it was like 13 or 14 people had come to this Bible study. And the Hindu guy was teaching them about Jesus, but he wasn't teaching them about doctrines. And like I said, the doctrines are important. If you can get somebody to know Jesus... And that's, that's what I, I'm afraid at this church. When I see people come in, and then I don't see them back. There's a young lady that's missing today, and, it's, and my heart hurts because she's not here. We have got to stop trying to evangelize these people when they come see us. We've got to love them like Jesus loves them. Because if we, if we go overboard, if we step too hard, I've done it myself. I've seen it. I have, I've been so anxious to get somebody in the church so bad that I, I, I ran them off. They never came back. And if you're a first-time person here today, please don't let us run you off. <laughs> We want to show Jesus. And then, if you get Jesus in your heart, the doctrines will... You can't keep the doctrines out of them. The doctrines are important. But without the love of Jesus... Without... Because without... Jesus says, you can do nothing without me. What, what part of that do we not understand? Nothing. We can do nothing without Jesus. That word nothing is a zero with the edges rubbed out. That's like nothing. We can do nothing with, without Jesus. The Hindu guy was teaching them to know Jesus. And the, the SDAs were trying to get the Hindu to come into their evangelism classes. And he said, no. <laughs> he, said, he, he said, you're wrong. He says, they said, they told they said, well, he, we preach the gospel through the evangelism class. And he, he said, okay, what is the gospel? <laughs> and, they, and they say, it's the good news. And, and of course, uh, they answer, that, what is the good news? The doctrines? I mean, really, what are the good news? The doctrines? The Hindu said, the good news is salvation through Jesus. Don't get me wrong. The, 
the doctrines are, are very important. Go and do that type of evangelism. Because if people know Jesus, they're going to die for Jesus. Not just keep the Sabbath, although the Sabbath is very important to us. They will do anything. Once, once they get Jesus in their heart, they'll do anything. Jesus is going to take us into eternity. The Hindu fellow says, he says, do your people do anything for Jesus? And this is what he said, and I, I don't want to offend you folks, but i got to say this. The Hindu, fellow, the Hindu fellow said, call a work bee and see how many people show up. Then you will know if they will do anything for Jesus. After a few studies, she came to her pastor that baptized her. And this is the woman that, that, that we talked about in the beginning who, who thought she was an Adventist. She says, she says I want to be rebaptized. He said, she says, I finally got Jesus. The pastor said to her, you've been baptized a long time ago. She said, no. It was just getting in the water and getting out. Now, I got Jesus. Our closing song. Oh, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm so used to looking up here and seeing the numbers. They're not there anymore. 604. Six hundred four. We know not the hour when Christ is coming back, but we need to be ready because He is coming soon. Hymn number six hundred and four. We know not the hour.
presence of God, you see how you are. We don't understand grace until we see how sinful and lost we are. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It is the fountain of life. Fear is good, isn't it? In God's presence, our pride collapses. Are we going to go to heaven without our are we going to go to heaven with our pride intact? Unless pride and ego die, we are not going to heaven. Only in his presence can we see that we are nothing. Our pride must first die before God can live in you and me. Before God can be powerful in you and me, we need to die to self. God cannot share his power with you as long as you are selfish and proud. It would, be, it would not be safe for God to share his power with you as long as you are selfish and proud. Father, we thank you that you love us and you care enough to send Jesus. Father, help us to grab on to him. Help us to take him into our hearts that it would change us to the point that you could come back to take us home. Father, may we each hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. May none of us hear those words, depart from me. I never knew you. Father, guide us through this week. Bring us into people's lives that we could not tell them about Jesus, but we can show them who Jesus is because he lives in us. We thank you, we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Be ushered for out. Fellowship dinner, or are you going to go? Okay. Uh, did your uh, sister ever get home? Did she ever get home? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the way